Have you ever had an awesome lens idea that you just could not get to work because you did not know how to control a material from a script? Well, I have good news because today we're going to learn how to do just that. I have here in Lens Studio a super simple scene. I just have a sphere that I've added and I've added the simple PBR material and applied it to my sphere. First, let's go over how you can use the behavior script to change your material. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is to add our behavior script. So let's come into our objects panel and our behavior script. And once it's added, let's select that and let's get it set up. Now I'm going to change my trigger to a face event and I'm going to change this to smile started. So anytime the user smiles, we'll trigger this behavior script. For my response type, I want to set material slash VFX parameter. And after just a moment, we can now choose a material. So let's select that simple PBR material. And next is going to ask for a parameter name. Now this is where people usually get stuck. What in the world do we put here? If you select your material in the resources panel and then come over to the inspector panel and hover your mouse over each of these parameters, you'll see this little tooltip pop up with a property. So here, the base space color, if I hover my mouse, the property is base color, no space. And that is what we want to use in our script. And you can do this for any of the parameters here. You can just hover your mouse and it'll tell you what that property name is. So let's come back to the behavior script. And let's say I want to change my base color. So I'm going to type base color. Now the value, I want to give it a new color. So let's change this to uh, a nice green when the user smiles. Let's do that. And now let's choose a preview where someone is smiling. And you can see that my sphere is now green. If I reset my lens, we start out with that default gray. And when they smile, it'll go green. And now I can go ahead and I can copy and paste this behavior script. And let's say when the smile is finished, I want to change the color to red. So I'll reset my lens. When the user smiles, we go green. And when they stop smiling, we go to red. Next up, let's go over how to use a tween script to change the material. Now, the first thing I want to do is disable this behavior script so it's not interfering with us. And let's add the tween manager. Once the tween manager is added, uh, go ahead and open that up, delete the examples. And then I like to keep this tween manager all the way up at the top of the scene. Next, I'm going to add a scene object. I'm going to rename this to tween scripts just to keep things organized. Now with my tween script selected, come over here, add component, script, add script, and we want to add the tween value. All right, so let's go ahead and loop this. We'll do a ping pong, just go back and forth. And if we select our material, let's choose what we want to change. Let's say we want to change this metallic value. So here, uh, we're just like a classic looking sphere. If I move the slider up, now we look more like a shiny metal sphere. So let's adjust this value with our tween. So I hover my mouse. I see that the property is metallic. I come back to the tween and I want to change my data type to a float. We want to go from zero to one. Leave this at one second. I'm going to change the easing type to in out because I'm going back and forth just to keep it smooth. And my tween is running but there's obviously nothing happening here. That's because we need to change this on update callback. I'm going to change this to set material parameter. We can leave this mesh visual blank. We just need to select our material. And let's change our property to metallic. And now you can see that the sphere is going from a metallic value of zero to one and back again. All right, let's make things a little more interesting now. Here I've created a custom material as just a simple HSV material. So we can specify the hue, the saturation, the value, and we convert that to RGB, and then we just output that value. So let's assign this to our sphere. Now you can see we have this red sphere here. And if we were to change the um, hue value, it would change colors. So when you create your own material, any value you wanna change, you need to expose as a parameter. So if I select my material here, you can see we have a saturation slider and a value slider. 
and I can adjust these and it'll change my material here. And those sliders come from these float parameters here. So let's go ahead and add a new float parameter and connect it to the hue input. All right, so once I connect this and save, you can see I have this custom float value here. Now, we don't want to just call this custom float. We want to know that this is the hue. So with this node selected, I want to open up the side panel. If you don't see this panel here, uh, maybe you've resized it and it's hidden, just click the little arrow. Let's name this to hue. Now, you'll notice that we have a title and a script name. The title is what will be displayed here. The script name is that property value that we can access from our scripts. So I'm going to name this to hue. I'll just do a lowercase h. Now, you can technically put spaces in here, but I recommend you avoid spaces. It's just easier once we get into the actual script. And we can enable a min and a max, and that'll turn it into a slider. So now as I move this slider, we can change the color of our sphere. Let's go ahead and connect a script to do it randomly. To access those material properties, we first need to import our material. So I'm gonna add a new input, and it's an asset.material, and I'll just call it mat. Now I'm going to just create a tap event, bind a function to it, and we just want to set the hue property to a random value. So I'm going to go script.mat, and I can't just type out .hue, I need to get the main pass, and then I can access that hue value. And then I'll just give it a random number. So the key here is to remember this main pass. Uh, this is where we're going to be able to find uh, these parameters here. So let's add the script somewhere to our scene. So I'm just gonna click off of everything. I'll just drag it here and now I get a new script. Let's rename it. Let's give it our material. Now, every time I tap, we'll get a random hue and our material will constantly update every time we click or tap here. So maybe you don't use JavaScript, but you do use the visual scripting. Let's create a new script graph. Let's call this random color graph. Let's go ahead and open that up. Now the process will be very similar for when we wrote the JavaScript. Let's add our tap event. We'll want to create a random number. And then we'll want to assign this to our material. So that means we need a material input. So let's search for that. And we can name this whatever we want. I'll just name it Matt just to keep things organized. And then we want to set the pass property. So let's search for pass. And here we can find set pass property. Now we want to trigger that after we generate a random number. So we'll tap, generate a random number, and then we'll trigger this step. Um, we can't just plug our material in. We need to get that main pass. So if we start typing get pass, we can find get main pass. Let's connect our material. Let's connect the pass. For the value, we want to take our random number. And on the property name, we named that hue. So let's save this. Now let's select our random color script. Let's disable this other one. So let's tap to make sure nothing's happening. Let's add a component. Script, let's select our graph version. We'll assign it to the material. Now, if we start tapping, we can see that we are randomly setting the color once again.